Hi guys, in this video we will be discussing Newton's laws and um, we'll just be defining, uh, going through the definitions and in the next video we'll do some examples but I'll just highlight some of the important points. So for Newton's first law, it states that a body will remain at rest or motion at constant velocity unless a resultant force acts on it. So that's just basically saying that if an object is already moving and there's no force acting upon it, it will continue moving. Of an object is at rest, it will remain at rest until a resultant force is applied on it. So it's very straightforward, but you need to know the definition. Uh, one point that sometimes students do forget is that it also could mean that um, it's a, not only rest but motion at a constant velocity. So that that's what it could mean. This uh, it's very important to learn these definitions word for word because um, the markers are very very specific about the words that are used. So we'll move on to the next definition, that's quite simple. It's using second law, you can remember this form, formula, but it states that when a resultant force acts on an object, the object will accelerate in the direction of the resultant force. The acceleration produced is directly proportional to the net force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. So you can remember this basically from the formula F is equal to MA, which you'll find in the formula sheet. And if you want to remember the law from the formula, you can just simply rearrange the formula. So the first part of the definition, when a resultant force acts on an object, the object will accelerate in the direction of the result force F is equal to MA. If you want to remember the proportionality rules, what you do is simply say F over M is equal to A. We divide both sides by M. Then from here, we can easily tell the proportionalities. You can say A is directly proportional to F and A is inversely proportional to 1 over M. Right? Or is directly proportional to 1 over M. What this means is acceleration is directly proportional to force and the acceleration produced is inversely proportional to the mass of the object. So that's just straight from the definition. So if, you're, if you know the formula, It'll be even given in your formula sheet, then you can derive the definition. It's not so hard. Right, let's move on to Newton's third law now. Newton's third law is simply the action reaction force. Uh, everyone knows this innately, but the definition is when one body exerts a force on a second body, the second body exerts a force of equal man magnitude in the opposite direction on the first body. How I actually learned it in school uh, was. When body A exerts a force on body B, body B exerts an equal but opposite force on body A. So it's basically the same thing. This is just action re reaction. If, if A and B are together like this, and A exerts the force on B, then B will exert the same force back on A. It's quite straightforward. And then we'll finally move on to the fourth law of Newton's law that the fourth law of Newton and that's basically stating that each body in the universe attracts every other body with a force that is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the centers. This one might be a bit difficult to remember, it's quite long, but you'll be given the formula in the formula sheet. Um, some of the key words here or what, something that can get students confused they can forget is that it's the product of the masses. There's M1 and M2. So it's a product of two masses. And again, from here, you can just look at the proportionality. You can see the force is directly proportional to M1 times M2. And it is inversely proportional to the distance squared between the centers. So this is how you explain the different... Um, they'll be asked questions about what's the mass of, um, of what is the weight of someone on a different planet and you can use uh, this Newton's law of gra universal gravitation to figure that out. So Newton's uh, laws are quite straightforward. Uh, you just have to really really learn the definitions word for word um, because uh, markers are quite quite strict on this part of it. So you learn these definitions as it's given here or you can check out the exam guidelines or past papers because they're going to use the same type of uh, uh, same type of marking criteria. Um, you can definitely expect one of Newton's laws or uh, definitions to be asked, so you're guaranteed uh, two marks if you, if you know this definition. 
So yeah, that's about it. In our next video, we will be looking at some examples of Newton's laws.